Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources, and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. Welcome back. I'm John Eldridge, and again, today with me is my wife, Stacy Eldridge. Hi there. Happy to be here. And we are sharing with you some highlights from the Pearl Collection, which is what? Oh, my goodness, what this is. It's the Captivating Retreat. They are CDs from the live events that we do here in Colorado. This would be 10 years in the making. These are all CDs that are chosen from all of the retreats that we've done over 10 years, the ones that were selected as the very best. And today's topic is? Today is my favorite. It is romanced. And what's that? It's about the romance with God and how Jesus comes to us in a myriad of different ways to romance our heart to his. Oh, now hang in there, guys. Hang in there. Men, I know that this is a talk from our Captivating Women's Retreat, but actually, I think if you'll listen, Jesus will speak to you as well about his love for all of us. So here are some highlights from the Captivating Retreat, and the talk is Romanced. Okay, let's look together just at one woman in the Bible that I love, and there's so many. Um, A woman who loved Jesus with everything she had, Mary of Bethany. Now, you know Mary of Bethany. She was Lazarus' sister, right? She's the other half of Mary and Martha. You know her. She knew Jesus. She knew him well. And because she knew him well, she loved him much Loving Jesus is simply the heart's natural response to knowing him. The last time we encounter Mary of Bethany in scripture is after Jesus has raised her brother Lazarus from the dead. And he is having dinner with the very much alive Lazarus. Martha is there. Mary is there. It's at Simon's house. And this is where Mary did the scandalous unthinkable. She came in quietly to the room. You know the story. She came in with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. And notice she's not at her house. This dinner is not being held at Mary and Martha's house. This is at Simon's house. She had to bring it with her. She planned this, okay? Okay, and many commentators believe that this was her life savings, This was a huge, huge deal. She brings the alabaster jar to Jesus. It has a long neck, these jars. She broke the jar, and ever so slowly, she began to pour it over his head and through his hair. And then when that was saturated, she went down on her knees, and she poured the rest on his feet. And then when that was done, she unbound her hair, and she wiped his feet with her hair. A respectable woman did not unbind her hair in front of other people. But Mary is not concerned with being a respectable woman. She's not concerned with what other people thought. She had an undivided heart. She went and she got everything that she had and she poured it out on Jesus and she loved him lavishly. She offered to Jesus quite literally all that she could. She spent herself on him and she ministered to him in a culturally significant way. Nowadays, if you poured your Chanel number no. five on somebody that you admire, <laughs> it might well end that relationship. <laughs> but everyone else in the room then recognized a significant offering of worship and anointing. That's what Mary did. And we love her for it. And there were two immediate reactions to that, two immediate effects. The first was the fragrance filled the room. She broke out what she had, and there was a change in the atmosphere. When we pour out all we have and all we are and offer ourselves in worship to Jesus, 
the beauty of that offering can be sensed in those around us. The fragrance lingers. There is a change in the atmosphere. And the second thing that happened immediately, right after Mary ministered to Jesus, was she was rebuked for it by the disciples. Over and over, Jesus had told his disciples that he would be killed in Jerusalem and rise again. But they didn't understand. The opposition to Jesus was growing every day. There was a contract out on his life. He was being hunted. It was a tent of Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, who understood the times, what Jesus was about to endure. And she knew there was not much time left. There was nothing she wouldn't do for him, nothing she wouldn't spend on him. And we hear this story in the other Gospels that the the disciples were indignant and rebuked her harshly. What a waste of money. A whole year's wages wasted. How many poor families could have been fed on that money? They saw only money. Mary saw only Jesus. Mark 14, 6, Jesus says, Why are you bothering this woman? Leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Why are you bothering this woman? Leave her alone. Jesus defended her reckless devotion. Jesus is our defender. No one understood Mary except Jesus. No one got her, but Jesus got Mary and he gets you. He understands. He knows your heart. He knew Mary's heart and he knew the depth of her love. He said, she has done a beautiful thing to me. He never says that about anyone else in the entirety of scriptures. She did a beautiful thing to me. She spent all her love on me. But did you notice what else he said? He said, she did what she could. She did what she could. She had her portion and she gave it. She gave it all. She did what she could. There is grace for us to receive here, gals. See, we are not all the same. Comparing ourselves to one another only leads to death. Comparing our lives of faith or ministry or mothering or offering or the way we pray or worship or hear God or don't, comparing ourselves only and always leads to death. There's no life there. We are different. We are each one of us given a portion. We're given our portion, our piece, our part to play. We're a body. We need each other. We're unique. We do what we can. Okay? And by the way, Mary's offering would have lingered. It still would have been in Jesus' hair, permeating his body, his feet, the fragrance of it was with him. Mary was not at the crucifixion, but her offering was. Mary spent herself on Jesus. She poured out everything she had onto him, and he loved it. We get to do it too. We get to minister to the heart of Jesus. We do that when we pour our love on him like oil. We tell him we love him as a response to who he is and what he's done. We respond to him because he's captured our hearts. How has he captured our hearts? Well, your heart in particular, what do you really love? What do you really like? Flowers, chocolate, lavish beauty, Oreo ice cream pie. 
blackberries, candlelights, horses running in a field, the sound of children laughing, the smell of a freshly mown lawn, the sound of water flowing over stones, thunderstorms, poetry, a good story, the smell of freshly baked bread, symphonies, acoustic guitars, desert vistas, and mountain streams, all for you. Did anyone see the color on the mountains tonight? All for you. He romances us through that, through sunsets, through landscapes and gardens and mountain ranges, through beauty and music and pain and tears, through longing and ache, through a revelation of the depth of our need for a savior, through an unfolding revelation of his boundless beauty. He is with us. And he is romancing us and catching us and reminding us of the truth. He knows you. He knows what you like. And he will come to you wherever you are. And he's saying, come closer. We are the beloved of Jesus. It is we that he died for, not out of a sense of duty or obligation, not even out of a sense of boundless charity. He sacrificed himself, yes, out of obedience to his father, but why? Because he loves us. He loves us to death. Better, he loves us to life. He thinks we're fabulous. He is the ultimate hero, and you are the heroine. Because he thinks that you and I are worth dying for. Because his heart beats after you. Because you take his breath away. Loving Jesus is our heart's natural response when we believe him. One who has been ransomed loves the one who has ransomed her. Who are you, really? Really? Because you are no longer defined by the messages of your wounds or the words that have been spoken over you. You are no longer defined by your failures or your weaknesses, but by the finished work of Christ. Who are you? Really? You are loved. You are wanted. You are chosen, delighted in, valued, and precious. You are romanced, you are irreplaceable, you are beautiful, you are his beloved. And who is Jesus, really? Well, he's the love you've been looking for all your life, and he has never taken his eyes off you. Ask him to make this real to you, for you. See, God speaks to us when we come away for times like this, times with him, when we come away from the busyness and our, of our schedules and the demands of our life, and we don't want to lose the things that he has spoken or that we have felt, and they can be so easily and quickly lost and forgotten. So we pray, Jesus, to remind us who we are continually. And we ask him again, do you have words for me? How has the romance come to me, you ask? Let him remind you, and then you're going to write it down. Do you have a special name for me? How do you see me? You can write down what he says, or you write down what you've already heard, or you write down what you really want him to say. Actually, you can write down whatever you feel compelled to say, and you're going to remember who you are. You're the beloved. See... Beloved means a much-loved person, dear, darling, loved, favorite, sweetheart. You're the beloved. Our God is a generous, lavish, extravagant God. Ask him. Ask him by faith. It makes him so happy when we ask him. It really does. We don't get tired of hearing how much he loves us. And he doesn't get tired of telling us how much he loves us. And he doesn't get tired of hearing how much we love him either. See, when we worship him, that's what we're doing. We're just telling him 
how much we love him and how fabulous he is. We thank him for being so kind and faithful and merciful and strong and good and true and for us. And we dive into his word and say, what do you say about me, God? The Bible says many things about you. It's like a love letter, really, to you. And in three words, the whole Bible is saying, I love you. And in two words, the Bible is saying, come closer. Come closer. Jesus, speak to your beloved. Remind her who she is to you. See, your Jesus wrote you the most glorious love letter that has ever been written, ever. And he is the one who rode into the depths of the darkest, most dangerous dungeon to rescue his true love. And he is the one who will ride again with fire in his eyes, a flaming sword in his hand on a white steed. He has inscribed you into the palm of his nail-pierced hands. He knows your every thought, cherishes your every tear, numbers your every hair. He weeps for you and with you. He longs for you. He hopes for you. He dreams of you. He delights in you and he sings over you. He is the one who has battled all the forces of hell to free you. And he is battling still. He's battling now. He is your knight in shining armor. He is the love you have been looking for. He is your dream come true. He is your hero. He is Aslan. He is the lion of Judah and the lamb of God. He is the prince of peace. He is the alpha and omega. He is the first and the last. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the mighty God. His name is Jesus. His name is like a kiss and an earthquake. His gaze is on you. His heart beats for you. He has pledged his love to you and betrothed you to himself forever. He is unchangeable and his love for you will never fail you. How will you respond? Love him. Adore him. Worship him. He's worthy. We hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from our Pearl Collection, which is 10 years of the best talks from our captivating retreats that you've been putting on here in Colorado. Yeah, and after listening to that, just put on some worship and go to town. Right. And if you'd love to hear the whole thing, if you'd love to listen to the entire Pearl Collection or anything else that we do here at Ransomed Heart, It's www.ransomedheart.com. 